Patrick Douglas uh, is up next. Um, we've talked about uh, our first three speakers who came from the school. We just talked about Bracken, who's giving back with his daughter who's here. But uh, Patrick has been a, a terrific supporter of our programs. I uh, gave a lecture today, has uh, given lectures in, in uh, our own uh, MPD program, and uh, he has helped us however and whenever we, we ask him. Uh, Patrick is, is the associate director uh, in what's known as the ideas team at Target. <coughs> uh, ideas team at Target is, is uh, in effect their internal uh, innovation and user experience a group that acts as consultants to the entire corporation. Um, prior to that position, uh, Patrick was, uh, was running their, uh, the design for their brand business. Uh, he's also the founder of what uh, targets uh, innovation network that they call LEAP. Uh, <coughs> he was an early uh, part of the design uh, department at uh, Target in that uh, he was actually the first industrial designer that Target ever had. So it brings a wealth of experience and it's just a, a wondrous guy and I'm just thrilled to have Patrick here today. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for inviting me here. It's great to be back in Chicago. This is where I started my design career. Um, I worked at Brooks Stevens Design. Um, it was a startup here in Chicago. I think it's now Insight um, Product Product Development. Um, I have to say, when I when I when I say I'm excited to be here, I'm really excited to be here because I was going to make some cracks about the weather. Um, I told Greg last night, Greg Holderfield. Uh, you know, I think, you know, there could be some challenges in getting here. Unfortunately, it was on the Chicago side, um, but I was about 30 minutes late for my presentation. And then tomorrow, I think we're expecting, well, tonight, maybe 6 to 12 inches of snow. So I'm hoping to get back. So it's great to be in the southern climate here. Um, <laughs> the one thing you didn't mention about Target um, in this, and I'll get onto the slides here, um, is that like I am the person that brought post-it notes to Target. Now, no, I didn't, I didn't purchase them first, but really starting to use them in a design thinking kind of capacity to start to visualize things, right, and to get stuff up on walls. And so, you know, you were joking about like stealing my pencil, and it's like, that's okay, because this is my MO, right? And I have to say, when I was walking around some of the studios and classrooms today to see like the post-it notes, and even from the last time I was here to see the walls and the kind of the activity going on, in the studios. I was really excited and you really made me feel at home. So um, again, it's great to be here. So, um, so as you mentioned, I'm Associate Design Director at Target. Um, I lead this thing called the Ideas Team. So we help businesses reframe their perspectives, generate innovative new ideas, and help bring them to life. There's a lot of folks that do strategy and research and stuff like that, but one thing that differentiates the team that I run is that we're all designers as well, right? And so we can start to visualize things. And when you, if you've ever been in that situation where you say, imagine this, right? And sometimes things are so far out there, it's hard to imagine. Well, we can start to bring that to life through visuals, through prototypes and things like that. Um, today, I'm gonna share with you a new story about Target. So something probably nobody in this room has heard before. Um, it's about how Target's leveraging two of our strengths, so design and community relations, to put a new twist on leadership um, by design. Okay. First, though, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on Target, tell you a little bit more about design and some of the work that we're doing um, in the community. So uh, I imagine most folks in here know about Target, right? So we're based in uh, Minneapolis. We have over 1,800 stores. 365,000 team members. As I go through this, like some of these numbers, even though I've worked here for a while, are just staggering. Um, and team members are what we call the employees that work at Target. Um, our brand promise is expect more, pay less. We thrive on the creative tension um, created by the paradox of that statement. So that is awesome fodder as designers. How do you deliver on that? And I think that's the magic of Target. 
So um, I've been taking post-it notes here as we've been going through, and I really like what Hugh said about like innovation from day one. Um, Target's first store opened in Roseville, Minnesota, but it was inspired by a discount um, shop that the Dayton company was running, their department stores in Minneapolis, out of their basement. And they put that in practice. They prototyped this new store, uh, this, or this new, morph, this new format, a discount retailer. And it kind of reminds me of that bathtub that you were talking about and how that happened. Um, Target continues to grow today. Um, City Target was launched in 2012, so it's about bringing smaller format stores into urban areas. The picture on the left is our State Street store in Chicago, but we're building this presence around the country. And we are also really excited to um, announce that, you know, we're in Canada now, and we just opened up stores on uh, April 5th was our grand opening. Currently, there are 24 stores in Ontario, and we have plans to open 124 Target stores across Canada by the end of this year. And we did some soft openings there, and it was kind of cool to hear, like, see some of the Twitter feeds coming in and stuff. And they said, wow, this is kind of like um, Black Friday here. You know, people were really excited, but it was like Tuesday or something like that. So um, we're really excited about the potential there. So to talk a little bit about um, um, strategy, back in the 90s, Target made a strategic choice, and that was to compete on differentiation, not just price. That's where that expect more, pay less brand promise came from. Design is a key element in that strategy. So Target's recognized as a leader in innovation across the retail industry, from pioneering the concept of designer partnerships to consistently being best in class in store design. All right. Now here's like Target has lots of videos, but this is one of my favorites, and it's kind of a classic. And in fact, when I was getting hooked and trying to, I came from Rubbermaid to Target. Um, it was some of the advertising that sold me. This is from our Design for All campaign, and it gives you an idea of the emphasis emphasis that Target has placed on design over the years. Oops. And this is my one possible technical glitch today. There we go. <laughs> Say something new, but say something new, something new, but something new. So that just gives you a little bit of the, uh, the spirit of uh, what I was talking about there. Um, so to date, Target has engaged in more than 80 unique design partnerships across the store. So from Michael Graves to Philippe Stark um, and currently uh, Prabal Goering. So I worked on a few of these partnerships, including Philippe Stark. That was probably like one of my most awesome experiences at Target, flying back and forth to Paris, sometimes just like day trips to go get prototypes approved and stuff like that. Sounds kind of glamorous, but after a while, um, it gets old. Um, but um, well, the one interesting thing about Philippe Stark, um, he was a catalyst for the initial expansion of our industrial design team at Target, right? And because we had to hire people to help support um, the work that he was doing. Like, he had designers and he had engineers, but we're the ones that had to make all of that stuff work with him. Um, and our design team almost doubled in size. I think we went from two or three to about seven people on that team, okay? It gets better as we go along, I guarantee you. Um, so in this slide, you may recognize here Missoni, um, and this was in uh, fall of 2011. Um, this collection, the launch, created so much buzz that our guests saw its arrival both online and in stores as an event to itself. We, we couldn't 
believe how fast this stuff sold out, right? Um, we would have bought a lot more, I think. Um, it was planned to be a six-week program. It sold out in six days. So if you were in that meeting at Target and there's a store about two blocks away and you're like, I'm going to go get some stuff afterwards, about the only thing you could pick up after that was the uh, Missoni Post-it notes, you know? <laughs> so um, next we have um, Jason Wu. Jason has quickly emerged as one of the most influential um, fashion designers of today, offering unique and distinctive styles in clean and classic silhouettes. So he brought that same relaxed elegance to Target in the spring of 2012. He also took time to join us in our collaboration with ne Neiman Marcus in this last holiday season. Um, perhaps at the same, excuse me, at the same time, he was designing Michelle Obama's inaugural ball gown. All right, and I'm really excited about um, some of our own brands, and one of those own brands is Threshold. So we've recently elevated our home assortment by introducing this brand with strong personality, exceptional quality, and outstanding design. I think you're, gonna, uh, you're not going to find anything else like it, and I'll tell you why um, in a moment. The full assortment just sat la set last month, and it's one of those things, now I'm back in the store, and I'm like picking up stuff and putting it in my cart, and I'm like, I don't really need this, but uh, I'm going to take it home. And you guys may be familiar with that kind of thing if you've been to a Target store. So this is just some of the other brands that we have that we develop at Target. Own brands, they're a critical piece of Target's expect more, pay less brand promise. They give our ac guests access to high quality, um, well-designed products at low prices. And at the same time, they build loyalty because those items can be found only at Target. So how many of you here know that Target has an internal product design and development team? Okay, so it looks like about um, half, of the, half of the room. So we have artists, graphic designers, industrial designers. This is going to sound like an Oscars kind of thing. Um, product development managers, textile engineers, design researchers, design strategists, brand strategists, trend managers, and on and on and on. Um, now, when I started, uh, like, I was uh, the first product designer, although my boss argues with me on, on that point. He was at Marshall Fields at the time. Um, but um, I was one of, um, one of 22 um, designers, or not designers, but one of 22 folks at Target, and had to prove the viability of design at Target. Now, one interesting fact about that, I started in an office that is kind of like that closet over there. It was maybe about four times as big as that broom closet, um, but it was actually, um, I shared it with somebody, we had about four computers in there, plotters and all kinds of things like that running, no ventilation. Now I have to say today, Target is much better when they're coming to treating their designers. We have over 400 team members developing thousands of products every year. And that's just product design and development. At Target as a whole, there are over 1,200 creatives there, right? Designing all kinds of things, from communications to packaging. They're designing it just for you, all right? So what happens when that design expertise is applied outside of its normal scope? Let's say in the community. And I don't know how familiar you are with the work that Target does in the community, but it's also something that we are very um, proud of. So I want to just double click on this and make sure you're aware of kind of what's going on in this space. Because we believe that Target can make a difference and our guests expect us to do just that. So Target gives back a lot. So in 2012, we gave 5% of our profits back to our communities. In fact, we're on track to give $1 billion to education by the end of 2015. Again, that's one of those staggering numbers when you think about it, and that's giving away. Actually, that's one of the coolest things about working with community relations. Usually you're trying to figure out how to make money, and in this case, you're trying to figure out how to give it away. They would totally not want me to say that, <laughs> but you know, it's about like how can you leverage those assets to create the greatest impact in our community. All right, so one of our primary focuses is education. Um, some of those programs include our Take Charge of Education, which has donated more than $354 million to US schools. We do field trips, which give kids the opportunity to get out of the classrooms, and we have store grants, which allows local stores to give money to their schools for what they want to use it for. One of my favorite programs um, is Target's School Library Makeover Program. So it's a great example of how Target leverages its internal strengths, and in this case, it's architecture, interior design, store design, um, 
along with our nonprofit partners, so convening these folks to do something that only Target can do. And it's really amazing. You see these volunteers in red t-shirts. That's what we look like when we go out into the community. But it's really interesting to see the sea of red out there, Target volunteers working over a matter of days to transform a library. And what's even more exciting is when that look, you see the kids come in and they see this space, you know? And it ne wasn't necessarily something they were proud of before, and they are so excited, and we've created this rich environment for them. Um, so Target's community relations team, it keeps our focus on giving back. And again, this is another thing that goes back to the foundation of the company. Target has always done this, the Dayton Corporation before us, we've always done that. And again, getting into some of those numbers, we donate over 679,000 annual team member volunteers hours. That's really incredible. And again, staggering when I think about it. Four million books donated since 2010, and we've um, redone uh, more than 150 of those school libraries. All right, so now putting design and community relations together is probably not top of mind when you think of design at Target. Um, you probably don't think of us um, when you think of design thinking either. You think about the product, right, the what, not necessarily um, the how. We used to get a lot of that at Target as well, and we still get some of it. Um, so it's like, what are you guys going to design products for the community with this? Um, and say, no, we're going to leverage our design assets to tackle some very ambiguous um, and complex businesses cha business challenges. Um, one other thing that makes this story interesting is how it started. Um, it was, th this collaboration started in um, 2012. Um, we had one of my team members from the ideas team, E. Liz, she was invited to go to Joplin, Missouri. And this was after th that, that town was devastated by a tornado. And they had a challenge there um, to um, reimagine how the schools could use time, but they also wanted to teach design thinking in that community because they had a lot to rebuild and a great opportunity to use design. She went down with a couple folks um, from the D school. We also invited this guy, Dean, and Dean is on our community relations team. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people at Target. We try to keep him in the loop with what we're doing, but we thought this would be a good thing for him um, to experience. Um, I called Dean, or I emailed him afterwards, and I said, like, Dean, how did it go? And Dean said, I got, I got the email back and said, well, this changed my life, both at home and at work. And it's like, it's one of those emails like, well, that's really cool, but I don't know what that means. And about two weeks later, I found out what that meant. Um, he, he said, I have this design challenge for you. I want to reimagine Target's approach to improving elementary reading school, uh, improving elementary reading skills. So this is not about curriculum. This is not about policy. This isn't Target's area. Of, that's not Target's area of expertise. It's about how we might leverage our strengths as Target and community relations to, again, to do something that only Target can do, right? And this is really important because if kids can't read proficiently by the end of third grade, they're four times more likely to drop out. So we use design thinking, right? And the Target approach starts with people. Um, and it's about empathizing, understand what they need, hopefully reframing your point of view. And this is where I get back to the uh, post-it notes here. That's why, that's why Bob's phones look different than Apple phones, right? Because they have a completely different point of view. It allows you to have a different perspective and hopefully differentiate yourself um, in the marketplace. The second piece is about visualizing. So we include ideation in that, we include prototyping and um, testing in that. So it's about creating something physical. Um, and we love this because it happens so fast, right? So we're not talking about a matter of weeks or days or months or years. It's hours sometimes. I mean, sometimes 15 minutes. We can go through this whole process in a couple of hours, and it drives speed to market. But it does something else that I almost think is more important. It helps us manage risk by doing, right, rather than through analysis. And analysis is a great thing, but it's hard, hard to look forward and predict the future by looking at the past, and especially with how business is changing today. You would never cross a street looking at the data from yesterday and saying, this is when I'm gonna cross now, right? Oh, is, is there anybody who would do that? No? I mean, you might be able to get it down to the right time, but you get the idea. 
All right. So, and we don't just make, oh, well, well I'm not going to go there yet. Um, the third part is about strategizing, okay? So the first two modules here, it's about designing an experience. The last part, strategize, is about designing an experience, right? So, or, or designing the implementation. So it's about assessing feasibility, um, viability. How do we win? So what are those strategic choices? And you want to walk away thinking, if I was a startup, what are the three, four, five things that I absolutely need to do um, to make this possible? Now, we didn't just make this stuff up, right? So we were inspired by many different academic institutions, business partners, consultants, and things like that. Um, we also have one person, and I thought she was going to be here, Nicole Ponzio. She's from the um, product design and development um, program here, and the master's program. And she's actually helping to lead our internal um, program, this grassroots movement on innovation. So it's really, um, I think, exciting to have that connection with the school here. All right, so now that part I talked about starting with people, that was really important and really important to our community relations folks because it helped us keep students at the center of our work. Um, and that is allowing them to live their mission, which is about driving measurable brand affinity and community benefit. So from a logistics point of this thing, um, we, our approach included three boot camps, three days each, in three cities across the country. Um, in boot camps, participants get hand-on experience, so if you haven't gone through this before, solving an innovation challenge from start to finish. Um, we brought, you can kind of see it in the background there, some like folding foam core workspaces, lots of Sharpies, Post-its. I'm jealous of Greg's prototype cart that he has over in the building. I have to get one of those. But we had our, you know, we brought prototyping supplies and stuff like that. And we converted school libraries and gymnasiums into mobile innovation labs. So it doesn't cost a lot to actually create a mobile innovation lab. Um, we created an environment where people could think differently. And there were a lot of different people there. So um, there were teachers, students, parents, and they weren't there just to watch us or to observe us do this. They were actually going to solve this problem with us, right? And no one's ever done this before. But we said, hey, you don't need any experience in this. Just like, we'll take you through the process. Um, so they worked in individual teams alongside us to solve this challenge. It was the first time we used design thinking outside of Target and in the social sector. Um, we made a lot of mistakes. Um, one thing, like, if you're in the design world, like, we all toss around the word users, right? Anybody? Yeah, like, we do. So when you see me talk about it here, hopefully I'm going to say individuals. It's kind of hard to break that habit. But if you can imagine going into the social sector and talking about users, right? It doesn't fly. Like, we have students and their users. Not going to happen. So there were some tense moments early on. And in fact, we found that, like, from a cultural point of view, we had to really change our perspective. Like, we changed our entire, like, program, basically. We have multiple decks that we're going through. We had to change it all to accommodate this kind of different environment. But it's cool because some of that's um, rubbing off on target. And I think we have more humane language because of that. All right. So... Um, and the important thing here, it's like, well, how do you start this design thinking kind of stuff? And my thing is like, just do it, right? We did, I think at Target, we did 13 or 14 boot camps last year. And if you would have taken the first one and said, well, that didn't work, you know, I look back now and I go, man, well, that was terrible. And I hope I look back this year on the things we're doing right now and I say, wow, that was terrible because that means we're getting better. Part of my team, part of the, our strategy or part of what we need to do is always be changing our process, always evolving it. That means we're always learning and we'll always keep moving forward. All right, so throughout this process, we listened to 46 stories, okay? And these students we talked to, they said, it was the first time I ever felt like I was heard. And it's because we're, we're, we're interviewing them in a way that is allowing them to talk. We're really listening to them. They're guiding the conversation. Um, it was amazing the emotion that comes out um, in, those, in those sessions. Um, we also came up with a lot of ideas. So we had 18 different teams over those um, three workshops, 540 ideas. Am I out of time? Okay. All right. Sorry, that's the first time, and the first time I looked at the clock. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to ideas, well, so we had 540 ideas. 
we think it's really important quality over or quantity over quality because it takes a lot of ideas to get to good ideas. Um, prototyping was important and testing those things. You see Reba, she's an executive in our um, community relations team. She's in this box. She is acting as an avatar. Um, and those are students in front of her um, interacting, so she's holding up a touch screen. And so when we talk about rapid prototyping and it's rough and rapid, it looks like that. The cool thing about this story is later on, Reba was walking through the halls of the school and one of those little girls walks up to her and says like, how did you get out of the computer? <laughs> and so we didn't know how good we were when we did that. Um, but anyways, um, there are three concepts that are moving forward out of this. Um, and it's really helped us to understand our um, opportunity map. And in fact, we weren't really into technology and we're taking a deeper dive into that now and starting to gain perspective because we've seen new things. Um, one prototype, and just to speak to the speed, we wrapped this up in January. One concept was just prototyped at Target's Bullseye Challenge. So this was at the South by Southwest Interactive Festival. Um, it was part of an app development program. And it wasn't the end all be all, it wasn't our concepts, but we were testing uncertainties and we were testing risks to understand so that we wouldn't necessarily have that big failure when we got to the end. We're gonna take little steps here. Um, so, and again, we talked about it's more than the big ideas though, and it's more about than the innovation process. It's changing the way we work. And I heard things about left brain and right brain. Um, Reba, who we talked about in that um, box in the TV monitor, you know, she's a business person. Um, she's not a designer, but she now draws, right? When she has a tough problem, she draws because that was part of what we did. And it connects her brain and helps her think differently. Dean and some of his team members will now spend 50% of their time doing design thinking in the community, right? And they've already started doing this. So they inspired, so the LA Unified School District, we had been working with them in part of this. They actually did their first little workshop or boot camp, and we pretty much, we gave them the materials and stuff, and they went out and found some of their own things. And it was amazing what they did because they listened to each other, right? They started with empathy. Um, and there's, there's Dean, and I actually wish, this is a great presentation for us to do together. Um, but this is Dean, and he is putting it on the line for the first time as a coach, and this was in our third boot camp. In the first two camps, he was a participant. Um, now he's becoming an innovation leader at Target. So this isn't just about design. And people who are working in this program, we have finance people who are doing it, marketing analytics people who are doing this, Target technology service people who are doing this, um, people who are working on our red counts and our financial things are doing this. In fact, they're one of the first folks to do a prototype with us and take the risk um, to, to use design thinking. So it's really amazing the impact that one person can have on such a large organization. We don't know exactly where this is gonna go, and I think design thinking is more about a journey, but we are confident, well, we're excited, first of all, I have to say, about what's going on, and we're confident that we're gonna create something that only Target can do, and I think that's leadership by design thinking. Thank you.